Want to design a vehicle for terrible performance? Then mount tons of machinery and liquid on four skinny tires. Oh, and make sure all that weight is suspended high above the ground. That's your typical self-propelled sprayer. Because of its strange but necessary design, farmers have come to accept the shortcomings of these tall machines. Handling that leaves you fatigued before your day is half over, constant steering corrections to stay between the rows, deep ruts, soil compaction, and mud performance? Well, you better just park it and wait a few more days. The problem is you usually don't have a few days to wait. You need to spray now or risk losing more dollars to pests or weeds. Here's the thing, there's a solution for these sprayer shortcomings. No, not the solution in your tank. I'm talking about the tires your sprayer rides on. You're never going to turn your sprayer into a sports car, but with the right tires and air pressure, you can dramatically improve its performance in the field. Today, we're going to actually show you the difference that lower tire pressures can make in the field. We're at the AgriVival Research Farm in Gibbon, Minnesota, where we'll be driving their loaded Haggy 2101 across the test ground and observe the sprayer's tracks as we go from a high to low tire pressure. As you drop the pressure in your tires, the footprint of your tires gets longer and larger. And today, we're going to see how much lowering your tire pressure can improve flotation. Why? Because soil compaction is a big threat to avoid, as it can cost you yields this year and many years into the future. Before we continue, I'd like to let you know that this demonstration is made possible by Yokohama Off-Highway Tires. They have helped us outfit this sprayer with VF Alliance 354 AgriFlex tires. The company produces several tire brands which are used in the agriculture, forestry, mining, and construction industries. Its flagship brand, Alliance, stays true to the company's motto, engineered to keep you ahead. On our sprayer today is a set of VF rated AgriFlex tires. The VF technology allows you to run 40% less air pressure than a standard radial tire while carrying the same load. Advanced VF technology will keep you a step ahead of poor sprayer performance. With us here today is Nate Furley with AgriVival. Hey, thanks. Uh, one of the cool things that we can do with the tire pressure and we look at soil structure is do what I call water infiltration studies. Uh, simply just measuring the time it takes for an equal amount of water to penetrate through the compacted layer that is within the tire track. Um, so what we did is we came out here a couple weeks ago when the conditions were wet. We drove the uh, 17 PSI and then the 35 PSI uh, tire track side by side through the same soil conditions. And we drove these PVC pipes in about eight inches into the ground. And that gets us below what any of our ripper might be, um, any of our tillage might be. So we're getting kind of that true soil profile. Um, by putting the caps on there, letting the soil conditions dry out, become more uh, uh, conducive to taking on the water, um, we, uh, we prepared for today. And, and that's what we're about ready to do is a water infiltration study on these two different PSIs. So once we complete the water infiltration, we're also going to go onto some looser soil that we tilled up just to show the visual difference between the 17 and the 35 PSI, which is pretty eye-opening to see that footprint difference um, on that soft soil. So we've got 32 ounces of water. Uh, we're gonna pour them into this pipe, the six inch diameter. We'll set our stopwatch and uh, we'll just simply time to when we see the surface water disappear um, between the two of them. Okay, so we're five and a half minutes into the, the timing of, of measuring that water to see, you know, which one truly soaks into that soil profile. And uh, looking at the 35 PSI, you know, we're, we're at that inch and a half water level and everything's pretty much seized. Uh, we're, we're not seeing bubbling. The water is not um, getting into those capillary pores of the soil. And so we've, we've just kind of stalled out where if we look over at the 17 PSI, you can still see the bubbles from time to time. So we're still pulling water in. Um, there's, there's, there's pores through the compaction layer and we're looking at, you know, just, just at an inch, if not below an inch of water left uh, in this tube. So still have an activity here at five and a half minutes in uh, where on the higher PSI, um, this is this is what we're going to see, right? We're going to see that water pooling up. It's going to sit in those tracks um, and not get into the soil where it's going to be beneficial for our plants. 
So we're at the 20 minute mark, uh, looking at our water infiltration study here. And again, with the 35 PSI, uh, the, the stall out has happened and there is not a lot more water that uh, can penetrate the soil. Um, we've given maybe, maybe an eighth of an inch here in 20 minutes of, of movement. Uh, however, on the 17 PSI, uh, we, we've started to stall out here as well. Not a lot of bubbling, not a lot of water, water infiltrating, but um, we have definitely gone to the three quarter inch water line mark. And uh, we're looking at uh, a good three quarter inch of water movement um, that is penetrated versus, versus nothing over here. So pretty interesting to see it to this point. Um, we'll continue to monitor the time it takes for um, that rain event to soak into the soil. So while we wait for this uh, water to completely infiltrate, what we're gonna do is take the sprayer over to a spot that we have tilled. We have really good, tilthy, soft soil and run a pass at the um, optimum PSI as well as kind of the not optimum PSI, something that may be similar without the technology on the sprayer. Okay, so our soft soil visual, um, looking at it just out of the, out of uh, initial responses, the 12 PSI, which would be our optimum to run uh, with the current weight that we have on the sprayer versus not so optimal. And, you know, right away, right away what I'm seeing here, look here next, you know, you got, look at the, the lug pressed in, but then I also have the spot between the lugs also mm -hmm. creating some pressure points. So obviously not displacing weight, but look how that crumbled yeah, there. Pretty impressive. So just another quick visual observation of how we're optimizing that footprint. Go to the top, three and a half. Two and a half, an inch deeper. Definitely more pressure, you know, more compaction on the surface here, taking a lot more, you know, I'm exceeding 300 PSI. And then it blows through where here, you know, it never really exceeds 250. It blows through. 80% of the compaction is done in the first pass. One pass can do a lot of damage. Displacing that weight, um, and again, another good indicator of what we're doing with the water yep. infiltration on just allowing that moisture to penetrate through, doing the, the least negative impact on the soil as we can. A necessary pass to make with the sprayer, yep. but optimizing it so that we're not having that negative impact on the soil structure in that pass. We're still at an inch and a half, maybe of down an eighth inch. We're at a half inch. So in 55 minutes after our train event, you know, we've, we've taken the majority of the water. Um, if we remember our initial measurement was about that inch and a half. So we're just slightly under an inch and a half on the 35 PSI tire track. And we've taken an inch of that surface water in on the track here in 55 minutes. So I'm um, definitely are seeing the differences. And uh, again, it just, Kind of what we saw below ground over there, right? Um, we, we got about an inch and a half, inch and a quarter of, of compaction layer difference between them. And, and that's what it means. It just means that the water has the ability to penetrate that track, get into the soil where it can be beneficial to the plants. I would say the most impressive takeaway that I've seen today is just our differences between the 30 PSI and the 12 PSI. Just not only the, the physical characteristics of the soil, but that, that inch and a half difference between the soil. I mean, how much deeper that uh, soil compaction is going is just amazing. You preach the concept every day, but I mean, once you actually see the, the proof of it, it's pretty amazing.
Yeah, like like you said, you preach it a lot. You yeah. work in the market space, yeah. but to see it for yourself, yeah. and uh, it doesn't sound like a whole lot, but when we put the pentrometer in there, you know, we saw that 40 psi difference mm -hmm. between the two, um, and and it circles right back to what we're doing here with the water infiltration. The the whole purpose of optimizing that footprint is to have the least negative impact mm -hmm. on our soil structure. Uh, and it just always floored me with tire pressure, right? It's yep. it's what is the worst case scenario, the fastest it's going to go, the heaviest, yep. but over 90% of what that ground touches with that tire is actually yep. field. And we mm -hmm. don't want to have that negative impact. So to, to see it full circle back to this, uh, we've taken in a whole inch of water from that three inch rain event in one hour. Uh, we still have the inch and a half of water here. Um, so th that one inch difference just proves everything we've seen here today on optimizing that tire pressure and that footprint allows more of that rainwater to get into the soil where it's needed for our plants and ultimately our profitability yep. on farm. So now we've seen the benefits of running your tires at lower air pressures in the field. To do this, your sprayer needs to ride on the right tire technology. And you have to be intentional about setting your sprayer tire pressures correctly. But there's one more problem. Sprayers spend a lot of time on the road too. Now in the tire business, we always tell farmers that you have to set your tire pressures for the load and speed at which your machine will be operating. So high speed road travel and lower speed field work require two different tire pressures, a higher pressure for the road and a lower pressure for the field. Because of this fact, if you're serious about tackling your sprayer's rutting, compaction, and handling problems, there are two technologies your sprayer needs. The first, is a central tire inflation system, or CTIS. With this technology, you can adjust your tire pressure from the cab with the press of a button. If you do a lot of roading with your sprayer, CTIS is essential for getting the most out of your tires and your machine. It will help you save fuel, extend your tire life, and you can transform your sprayer's performance in the field. Without CTIS, you can't really drop your tires to their lowest safe pressures for the field. Why? because at those low pressures, you'd absolutely cook them on the road. With CTIS, you can have the optimum tire pressure every minute of every day. I've already mentioned the second technology you need, VF tires. VF technology will help you get to those ideal low field pressures that will make sure that your sprayer has the largest footprint possible. While this technology isn't exclusive to Yokohama, the Alliance brand has a ton of VF rated tire sizes and models for the largest machines on your farm. In fact, Alliance has one of the most extensive ag tire lineups, period. In our experience, Alliance products deliver a high level of performance and reliability at affordable prices. Because of this, it's one of our best-selling brands. If you want to explore your VF sprayer tire options, or if you want to know more about CTIS and how it can boost the profitability of your farm, reach out to one of the farm tire and wheel specialists at NTS Tire Supply. We're proud to provide expert tire recommendations based on years of real world experience in the ag industry. Plus, we'll give you top dollar for the tires, wheels, and hardware you trade in when you upgrade your tire setups. And we'll get you a quote on your new tire setup quickly for any major tire brand. I'm Nick Fisher with NTS Tire Supply, and we're here to help you drive your farm forward.